Is the Toronto market crashing? What's going on with interest rates? Will the market crash like 2017? Is a recession coming? Keep watching this video because I'm going to answer all four of those questions. Right in front of me, I have the market stats from July 2021 until now, and I'll put it up on the screen somewhere. So as you can see, we are down 6.1% from the highs in February. But if you look back to December, we're still up 8.34%. I just want to direct your attention to the months of inventory, MOI. And as you can see, it is nearly doubled from last month. This just means that we are experiencing more homes being put on the market while less homes are being sold, which is very significant. But we are still in a pretty strong seller's market as under two months of inventory is normally a strong seller's market. A strong buyer's market starts around five and six months of inventory. Usually when we go from March to April, we see a huge jump in sales as the spring market starts. But this time around, we actually saw a 20% decrease from 10,000 to 8 and that is crazy. Finally, something normal about this chart, the active listings have increased and that is normal around this time. Although the overall numbers don't look great, this is a vast generalization of the entire GTA. Specific markets in specific places and specific types of properties might actually have amazing numbers. All you need to do is just do a little deep dive in the neighborhood you are searching for, maybe have a realtor help you, and you will find exactly what you need. Or at least you will find out what the right move is for you. Now on the screen, somewhere should be April sales from 2008 until now. We went from 13.5 thousand sales last April to only around 8,000 this April. That is a very significant drop off, but the thing is, it's just two data points from two different years and two different market situations, which is why we have this 14 year graph so we can look at it over time. The more data points there are, the better off you're going to be. The 14 year average is 9,500. We are below that, which means that less properties are being sold, which also means that buyer sentiment is changing. Less people want to buy a home right now. Here we have the same type of graph, but for April active list. The red line again is the 14 year average, which is around 16,000. As you can see, since the pandemic, we have actually been well below the average. So when you hear people saying that the inventory is building up, Although what they're saying is true, you should also take into consideration that we are still well below the average. But of course, active listings are the end all and be all for market inventory. The months of inventory can still increase even if we are below the average. This is because buyer sentiment is the other very main factor and it is shifting. I believe it'll continue to shift as more interest rate hikes are coming and less people will want to or have the power to buy a home. So even if the active listings stay below that 14 year average, if sales keep coming down, the months of inventory will increase, bringing us closer and closer to a buyer's market. Just coming back to the same chart from before, if you look at the average price, we are still around the January numbers. Despite all this craziness in the media and people screaming from rooftops that the market has crashed, we are still at the January numbers. But that's not to say that we won't continue sliding. I believe we'll continue to slide down in price as the active listings are increasing, sales are coming down, and interest rate hikes are coming. If we somehow see May sales numbers in the 6,000s, we will be in big trouble. This will cause the inventory to pile up a lot right before the June interest rate hike. And I'm sure this will send the market sliding even more. But again, I don't think 6,000 is going to happen. I believe we'll probably come in higher than that. But who knows, I could be wrong. I know that you've seen in the news people saying towns and semi detaches are crashing so hard compared to everything else. Well, this is the reason why. A lot of people decided to upgrade from their towns and semi detached to a detached home. But the problem was that they didn't sell their property first. They bought the property and now they're trying to sell it so they can actually honor the agreement of buying the property. This means that they're in a situation where they have to sell ASAP so they usually just let it go for under market value. That's why it's very important to have a smart agent like me who could help you navigate this market and help you sell your home prior to buying a new one. Right before we talk about what happened in 2017 and the potential of a recession, allow me to actually introduce myself. I love real estate with all of my heart. It is my passion and I put all my time into it. If you want to reach out or you have any questions at all, you can just go down below into the description where I have my contact information, phone number, email, and then I also have my social media links. Anyways, back to the video. A lot of people think that what happened in 2017 will happen now. So here I have the 2017 numbers. As you can see, they had a run up of 25% 
while we've only had a run up of 15. Their prices then went on to drop 14% in two months while we've dropped six in two months. So to compare now to 2017, the numbers were clearly much worse in 2017. But we're still in the very early stages, so we'll have to see. So prices just continue to drop to August and then there's a quick bounce back and then it continued to drop again. As you can see in April, they hit their high at the time, which is $920,000. It never really recovered back to $920,000 until the end of 2019. That is an 18 to 24 month period to crash and then recover. Is that gonna happen now? The truth is, nobody knows. Although we are very similar to 2017, 2017 was more of a big shock no one expected prices to come down as hard as they did but right now the buyer sentiment kind of looks like they're actually expecting the market to come crashing down a little bit so if 2017 was a 10 out of 10 on the scale we would probably be around a six or a seven now interest rates and the recession i would love to be optimistic about the rates not being increased uh, since prices are now coming down and inventory is building up but the fact of the matter is is that interest rates and real estate prices is not the only thing that they're looking at the r word recession is being thrown around in the u.s after they have their first negative quarter in gdp so technically speaking a recession is classed as two back-to-back -back negative gdp growth quarters what does this have to do with canada you might ask well canada has a gdp equivalent or less than california which basically means that the Bank of Canada just listens to whatever the Federal Reserve does. So in order to be prepared for the next recession, interest rates have to be high enough so that they can then decrease them to combat recession. That is all I have for today. As I said before, my contact information is in the bio or the description. If you want to contact me, have any questions, you can also leave your questions or maybe even video ideas in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. See you next time.